we've always known that we are more than what we're portrayed to be. So we didn't necessarily need the convincing, but I think what was lacking was perhaps the tools to be able to access this global stage and be able to tell our own story. And I think that social media has played a huge role in that. You've seen trending hashtags and sometimes people, ordinary people, challenging the narrative of a big global corporate, you know, multimedia uh, companies and say, no, that's not how you should speak about us. Or no, actually that, that, that title is skewed or whatever. You know, I think that there's just been so much activism towards this reshaping of our own narrative. It's very, very encouraging. I think that the narrative that we're trying to tell, that that we want to tell, is a narrative that is fundamentally true. It's going to be credible, even from an ethical point of view. It's to say, yes, we have all of these things that we're doing really, really great and the world should know about them. But then there's also this bucket of challenges that we have as a continent. And in order for us to meet those standards, we need to raise our own standards in terms of how we show up. Um, as as, as a solution bearers or problem solvers. I have a responsibility, you have a responsibility, we all have a responsibility to contribute to this narrative change, but we also have a responsibility to learn about our own continent, you know? How do you go about shaping a narrative or changing a narrative if you yourself don't know where you come from, what's your history, you know, what's the background of your own people, um, etc., in your own backyard, but also on a continental stage. Kalinda says to watch out for the term women's empowerment. It's often not as empowering as you might think. Um, if we're talking about empowerment, it assumes that somebody else has the power and that they have to to, to then come come and give it to us. So we're putting ourselves in a in almost a, a place of victimization, which I completely disagree with. These narratives that that talk about us in a way that's not representative of, of who we are, and and one of those those narratives is that women, African women in particular, don't help each other climb the corporate ladder. The major opportunities that I've had in my career, in my life, um, and and in my family life even, you know, I've I've raised three children on my own, wouldn't have done it without the support of other women in my circle. We have to fight that divisiveness uh, that's sown amongst us by the narratives that that are, I feel, implanted in our midst and that we then end up buying into. So when you walk into a boardroom and you see another woman of color, you almost go on the defensive and you think to yourself, well, you know, I don't know if she's really going to open doors for me. Why not? I think that those are the little things that we need to start looking at and questioning. And and I think that once we start to do that, we, we will realize that, in fact, there's no empowerment to be done. We already have the power.